Hi guys, Olive here, here today to do the second tome around book tag. I am not sure if anyone actually tagged me to do this one, but it was created by the lovely Julie over at The Hungry Bookworm. I will leave a link to her original video down in the description box below. This tag is all about secondhand, aka used books, which is so up my alley. I've been really excited to answer these questions, so let's get started. Question number one, do you buy secondhand books? Yes, I am a huge fan of used used books. I would say at least half of my books, if not more than that, are used books. I get a lot of them at library book sales. We have so many library book sales here in Pittsburgh, and I also adore used bookstores. Question number two is what is slash was your latest purchase? Well, with everything being shut down for so long because of the coronavirus situation, I haven't been haunting my local venues as much as I'd normally would. Most of my favorite used book sales, library book sales and otherwise, in the spring and summer were completely canceled. I think the last library book sale I was at was at the beginning of March, right before all of this started happening here in the States. However, for a couple of weeks back in May, I was temporarily helping out at my favorite local used bookstore here in Pittsburgh. It's called Amazing Books and Records. It has two different locations. I was mainly doing some organizing, some miscellaneous tasks, and I was also helping to pick out books for a program that the owner had started to select books for people to send out to them. He was trying to generate sales. As he was closed, he had to be closed for an extended period of time, as basically every business did. An added benefit of working there for the couple of weeks that I was, was that I was able to sell him my books that I had ready to go out the door. I pretty much always have books that I'm looking to sell. So I was able to sell him those and get a bunch of store credits. And of course, as I was going around organizing and shelving things in the store, I saw things that I wanted, including some Reader's Digest editions that I did not already have. So I picked up Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This matches my lipstick perfectly. <laughs> Tess of the D'Urbervilles by Thomas Hardy, and Master of the Ballantrae by Robert Louis Stevenson. In case you didn't already know this, these are my favorite editions of the classics. They are gorgeous, they are very sturdy, they are often illustrated, but they are older. They are not newer publications, so I have to find them used. I'm not the biggest collector of specific book editions, except for these books. I have a ton of them so far. I think I have around 45, including the three I just showed you. Most of them I got in a huge haul I did last year. I ordered a big lot of them off of eBay for a very reasonable price. Totally worth it. I definitely want to own these all someday, but there are about 150 of them, and I only have 45 so far. So it's definitely a longer term project, but I was delighted to see that there were three that I did not own when I was working at the bookstore. Question number three is what condition do you find acceptable, i.e. tatty, not tatty, etc.? I don't mind some mild to moderate wear and tear on my books if I'm being completely honest. It's kind of part of the territory when you deal with used books. So if it has like minor water damage, yellowing pages, lack of a dust jacket or a torn dust jacket, it really doesn't bother me. Honestly, I kind of like when my books have been loved. But if it's in really bad shape, especially if the shape it's in will affect my reading experience in any kind of a way, for instance, if the book is falling apart or has pages coming out of it, then I will pass on that copy and hold out for a copy in better condition even if it's a book I really want. Question number four, after you have read said book, do you keep it for a reread or do you redonate it? It depends entirely on two different conditions. Condition number one, I absolutely love the book. And condition number two, I can see myself rereading it at some point. If those two conditions are met, then that is an extra special book. I will keep it and it will go on the extra special skinny shelf right here behind me where I keep all of my favorite books. If a book does not meet those two conditions, then it will go into a tote bag like this one. This is actually my favorite tote bag. It says, get in loser, we're going to the bookstore, which is a Mean Girls reference. I keep all books like that in tote bags like this one in the closet here in my reading room. And once I have enough tote bags full of books, I take them to the used bookstore, to Amazing Books and Records, and trade them in for credit. What you don't see here on this channel is just how many books I get rid of because I don't do unhaul videos. I would say 80% of the books that you see me hold up and wrap ups 
those books are out the door as soon as I'm done with that wrap up. I do that so I have a good flow of old books going out, new books coming in, so I have space to put all the new books that I'm always acquiring. Just because I have my own reading room doesn't mean I have unlimited space for books. I don't want to be swallowed by books. I am also the opposite of a hoarder. I love getting rid of things. Question number five is, do you have a favorite place you like to go to when looking for secondhand books? I do have a few favorite library book sales here in the city. I have been to enough of them around Pittsburgh to know which ones are the best, but I'm not revealing those secrets. I do also obviously love amazing books and records. I also used to shop a lot at Half Price Books. They have several different locations around Pittsburgh. I've always really loved them. But after seeing how badly they've been treating their employees since the start of the coronavirus situation, I'm not sure I feel good about spending my money there anymore. I'm gonna need to see some improvements before I decide whether or not they deserve my business. If you haven't heard about that situation, I will link an article or two down in the description box below for you to check out. I highly recommend you read them if you are a customer of Half Price Books. But in the meantime, while my normal used book acquisition methods have been inaccessible to me, I have been utilizing betterworldbooks.com for my used book needs. They have an amazing selection, they have really low prices, they have fast and free shipping, and they do a lot of good out there in the world. They promote sustainability, they promote literacy by donating to literary organizations, they provide grants for nonprofits and libraries. I know all this gushing must sound like I'm on their payroll. I promise you this is not a sponsored video. I just love Better World Books. I love their books. I love their mission. I love putting my money there. Question number six, hardback or paperback? Do you have a preference? I much, much, much prefer paperbacks. I find hardcovers unwieldy. I absolutely detest dust jackets. And I find it endlessly frustrating that books come out first in hardback here in the States. If you want that book in paperback, you have to wait upwards of a year for it to come out in paperback after the hardcover has had its run. I've been very openly critical of the way that publishing does business on multiple occasions here on this channel and off of this channel. I really don't agree with a lot of the decisions that they make, but I'm not in charge, so I will spare my blood pressure. I will just say that I am highly supportive of the whole paperback original trend, meaning that a book comes out in paperback and it's only ever in paperback. It seems like publishing is mainly doing this with genre fiction right now, but I hope they extend it beyond those niches. But to circle back to the question, if I am at a used bookstore and there is a hardcover copy and a paperback copy of the exact same book, and it's a book that I want, I'm going for the paperback. Question number seven is, have you found any real gems? I have found so many gems over the years, it would be impossible for me to talk about all of them, but I will provide a few examples here in this video. Last year, I placed an order with Better World Books for a copy of The House of Mirth by Edith Wharton. I loved that book. I wanted to have my own copy. But often with Better World Books, the picture of the book that you will see on the site is just a placeholder for whatever edition they have in stock. It's not always true to what you will actually receive. That never has bothered me, but you might wanna be aware of it before you order with them. So when my box of books arrived, I had no idea what edition of The House of Mirth was actually going to be in there. But when I unboxed everything, I saw that it was a Reader's Digest edition of The House of Mirth, aka my favorite editions of the classics like I was talking about earlier. And it's in basically new condition. I was over the moon. Often when I'm browsing at a used bookstore, I will find books that I've never heard of before, but that seem like they were made for me, kind of like Gilbert Waldbauer's Fireflies, Honey and Silk. I found this one at a booktuber meetup a few years back. It's almost too beautiful for words and these end papers. The end papers have this honeycomb texture to them. I just cannot with this book. I also found my copy of Feathers by Thor Hansen at Amazing Books and Records a couple of years ago. This was the book that introduced me to Thor Hansen, who went on to become one of my favorite natural history writers. The power of used books. Question number eight is optional, but it asks me to find a book from my shelves that I can donate either to a good cause or to my local charity slash Goodwill shop. Well, as I was saying earlier, not only do I get rid of books, I have no intention to reread basically immediately. I also regularly cull these shelves behind me and all the rest of the books here in my reading room. So I know already that there's nothing there that doesn't belong there. Since I sold my books that last time, I have already started accumulating new books in those bags to go and be traded in for credits 
One of those is a book that I was not all that impressed by in the month of May. That was Bowling Alone by Robert D. Putnam. If I can't sell this one for store credit, like if they already have too many copies of it, or if it's not in good enough condition for them to take it, then I will happily donate it instead. I pretty much always have a donation pile going. It's just normally made up of clothing and housewares, but I will happily take this one along if for whatever reason Eric can't buy it. And the last question, question number nine, asks you to tag some people. And I'm going to tag four ladies, all of whom I've met, and most of whom I've had the pleasure of going book shopping with. One of them I actually met at a library book sale. I will tag Stephanie at That's What She Read, Kate Howe, Sabrina from Stay Cacino, and Alex at Hey Little Thrifter. But if you're also a lover of used books and used book shopping, then please go ahead and do this tag and say I tagged you. If you have any comments or questions about anything you've seen in this video or about anything in general, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. But you can also find me on a variety of different places on social media, and the links to all of my profiles will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you are having a wonderful day, and I will see you in the next video. Bye. <music>